Hello, my name is Bill Brush, and I'm the president and founder of Cut Unnecessary Regulatory Burden, a 501c4 Virginia corporation formed for nonprofit purposes to educate and inform our community on the importance of property rights. Today's discussion will be how to read your flow easement and how important that easement is because this is how it retains your needed property rights to access the project for recreational purposes. Here is what the typical flowage right and easement deed looks like. Every one of these deeds are recorded with the county clerk in the county where the land exists. This particular deed is recorded in Franklin County and it can be found in deed book 183, page 241. This first section of the deed simply describes who the parties were and when the deed was executed. The middle portion is nothing more than a property description and tells us where the original land deed is filed by deed book and page number in Franklin County. The bottom portion is where we start to set the scope of what this easement was for. Let me read. It's for the construction, the existence, the operation and or maintenance of the dam and or power station and to impound waters and to vary water levels up to the contour of 800 feet. You should note there is no mention of an APCO shoreline management plan. There is no mention of an APCO federal license or the FERC or any other federal organization that's regulating this project. This is the deed that was made between the original landowner, the fee simple owner, and Appalachian. It's as simple as that. Here's page two of the typical flowage easement. On this page is when the easement starts to define the rights of the parties. Paragraph number one at the top, for the purposes of dam and power station construction, operation and maintenance, APCO was granted the right to enter and to clear anything below the contour of 800 feet. The landowner, meanwhile, retained all his rights to use the easement in any manner that did not interfere with their flowage rights, including the right to reach the impounded waters for recreational purposes and domestic water supply and to erect fences into the impounded waters to contain cattle. If the owner made any uses, as described in paragraph one above, he assumes all risks of using the easement. If the landowner makes any other use of the easement, it could be made under a revocable APCO license. Notice that other uses are not defined and unspecified anywhere in this easement. We'll talk more about that in the next couple of slides. The landowner agreed that he will not discharge or discard any contaminating material into the impounded waters. And the agreement includes full compensation for the flowage rights granted to APCO and those rights retained by the landowner. These rights attach to and run with the land title forever. And the landowner has the right to convey their rights and easement improvements to new owners without APCO's permission. Again, you'll notice there's no mention of any permit or any requirement to notify Appalachian of the sale of your real estate. Here we're going to examine closer Appalachian's claim that it has the right to clear anything and everything from your property below the contour of 800 feet. From the last paragraph on page one of the flowage easement agreement, I'll read, Granters hereby grant unto Appalachian forever the right to overflow so much of said premises as may be overflowed as the result of the construction, existence, operation, and or maintenance of the aforesaid dam or power station. This is what limits the scope of the flowage easement. There's no mention of shoreline management. There's no mention of a federal license. From the first paragraph on page two of the flowage easement agreement, for the purposes Mentioned above, granters hereby grant Appalachian the right to enter upon said premises, 
Remove therefrom any and or buildings, structures, and improvements below the contour, the elevation of which is 800 feet. What this means is that if something is being done in the flowage easement that impacts their ability to flood your property or operate the dam and generate electricity, then you probably would have violated the flowage easement agreement. So let's look at closer at page two and let's discover whether or not APCO's claims that they can issue revocable licenses for any use within the project boundary is true. So let's read. Granters shall have the right to possess and use said premises in any manner not inconsistent with the estate's rights and privileges herein granted to Appalachian, including the right to cross said land to reach the impounded waters for recreational purposes. Recreational purposes you know, is very broad and it means a dock, a beach, a boat ramp. It means anything that you do to get to that water to use it, including the reasonable improvements you would make to access those waters. If the grantors exercise any of the rights set forth in paragraph one above, or make any other use of said premises, such exercise or use shall be at the sole risk of the grantors. Now let's talk about other use. We don't know what that is. It's not defined in this flowage easement in any place. So if there was some other use made, whatever that may be, we don't know, it would could be made and deemed to be made under a revocable license from Appalachian Power. But paragraph one is specified as our right and nothing in this paragraph or in this flowage easement says that we need a license or permission from Appalachian to exercise the rights of paragraph one. And we should note that the above mentioned considerations include full compensation for any effect by reason of the construction, the existence, the operation and or maintenance of the aforesaid dam and or power station. Once again, reinforcing that this only has to do with the ability to construct, operate, maintain and generate electricity. And note at the very bottom that the covenants and the agreements herein shall be covenants attaching to and running with said premises. That's your property rights forever. And when you sell your property, they automatically follow the title of the land and transfer to the new owner. Well, we're at page three of the easement, the last page. And all this page does is basically explain that the flowage deed provisions extend to and are binding upon all the parties and their heirs, their successors, and any tenants. And the middle of the page, it just is properly notarized and becomes a valid deed that becomes part of your property rights. So what have we learned? Well, we learned that APCO negotiated and recorded flowage easement deeds for all the properties in this project in and around the 1960 timeframe. All the flowage easement is, is a contract between the property owner and APCO. That landowners granted APCO the right to flood and clear lands within the project boundary, but only for the construction, the maintenance and the operation of the dams and their power stations. No mention of shoreline management, no mention of Appalachian's new license or any license with the federal government. When the landowners granted Appalachian the rights to flood, they retained all other rights to possess and to use the easement as the fee simple owner, so long as their uses did not impair APCO's flowage rights. We learned that the easement runs with the land title forever, and that is why the flowage easement agreement is probably the most important document you have in your chain of title because it guarantees you the right to use the project for recreational purposes, make reasonable improvements called docks, boat ramps and beaches, and to be able to sell your property without interference from them because these rights follow the title of the land and transfer to new owners. CURB is a 501c4 
not-for-profit corporation registered in Virginia. CURB's mission is to educate and inform our community about the importance of property rights, and all donations to CURB are undiscoverable and anonymous. So please consider donating to CURB to save your property rights and help defend the ongoing litigation with AEP and the FERC over property rights being taken without compensation.